this year in the um, in you know reviewing the endometrial cancer landscape, um, we have seen almost a renaissance of new approaches to this disease as we've learned more and more about the intrinsic biology. For years, we had seen steady improvements by addition, adding different forms of chemotherapy, either in combination and bringing novel agents into the space, but incrementally. So starting with single agent therapies, moving into combination therapies with platinum, and then a brief ex, uh, research experience looking at some of the additional elements that focus on the tumor microenvironment. Uh, the most recent of which prior to the adoption of immune uh, therapy, which, uh, which is really kind of the center point of the new therapies moving forward, was the use of bevacizumab. And so uh, there were several trials that looked at the role of bevacizumab as an adjuvant during chemotherapy and given as a maintenance treatment. Um, the collective of all of these experiences has been that we've kind of reached a therapeutic ceiling with uh, that kind of strategy. And it really was when we learned about the molecular characteristics of the endometrial cancer space where different tumors with similar morphology end up having different types of alterations that could be leveraged as the investigative world essentially has continued to advance. And so, as I mentioned earlier, one of the most promising areas that we've seen developed is that of immunotherapy which is um, a treatment that is taking advantage of a relatively large sub-segment of endometrial cancer that's defined by a deficiency in microsatellite uh, 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 repair. Because of that deficiency, which we see in up to almost a third of, of, of endometrioid adenocarcinomas, which is the most common cell type we see with this disease, we have um, uh, identified that these alterations that are found do lead to high levels of tumor-specific neoantigens. And so this was investigated uh, as a entity across multiple solid tumors in a large clinical trial, which was evaluating single-agent pembrolizumab. And interestingly, when this first indication appeared, it appeared without any reference to a specific disease histology, but it was most relevant for some of the tumor types where, where we find MSI uh, or deficient MMR, mismatch repair, uh, in uh, solid tumors, the two of which being colorectal cancer and endometrial cancer. So with the identification of this single agent at producing objective responses and even more importantly, prolonged durations of response, and, and delay in progressions, it became very exciting to start to move this particular therapeutic strategy earlier on into, the, into our therapeutic paradigm. And currently, uh, we have identified that in patients whose tumors are deficient in this repair mechanism, that this drug has not only single agent, but is also now of great, we think of great value to us in looking at it in combination with uh, chemotherapy, and also uh, in combination with other novel agents. When we look at the, the patient population that is uh, stable, so it does not have microsatellite insufficiency or deficient MMR by our testing algorithms, we, were identi we identified a combination with lenvatinib, which is a multi-tyrosine kinase inhibitor that uh, demonstrated high levels of objective response rivaling that of chemotherapy. And so when we looked at this in a, uh, again, another large prospective trial, we found that there was objective uh, response as duration of response and delay in progression, uh, which was uh, quite impressive and applied to now this microsatellite stable cohort of patients. So the development stream that's happened with these uh, two drugs, pembrolizumab and uh, now pembrolizumab and lenvatinib is applying into earlier lines of therapy. And we've just heard that when we looked at this in patients who've already had at least one line of prior chemotherapy and is being compared against reference chemotherapy single agents, that this combination appeared to be superior. Now we haven't seen the data, 
but it's been announced in the in the public domain that there is uh, that that has met its all of its primary endpoints. We're very excited about that because right on that heel of that particular trial will be another trial we call LEAP001, which will be evaluating uh, the combination of lavatinib and pembrolizumab against standard first line chemotherapy with an opportunity to uh, to kind of supplant our our strategy. So when you look across the spectrum of endometrial cancer. Uh, we're starting to see more and more uh, evaluation of the incorporation of immunotherapy into this uh, into this clinical domain. We have a lot to look forward to with respect to that, along with the uh, myriad of other uh, potential uh, promising sites, such as HER2 new amplification, which we see in one of the more uncommon tumor types we, we call uterine serous tumors, uh, where we've seen some preliminary efficacy, efficacy activity. So very exciting time uh, to be in this uh, space and it's uh, good news for our patients.